There's a holdup in the Bronx. Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child. Cruise ships do it I know wild. Car 54, where are you? The drunk says to the bartender, that was no moose, that was a hat rack. <laughs> <laughs> I got another buckle buster. This drunk walks up to me on the street and he says to me, buddy, can you spare 20 cents for a cup of coffee? So I said, coffee's only a dime. So he says, aren't you going to join me? Join me. <laughs> Did you ever see me do Captain Block on the pistol range? Yes. yes. Do it again, Charlie, please. All right. Captain Block on the pistol range. Pow. 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 Uh, Can I tell you I got a date with my girl tonight? My girl. I call her my melancholy baby. Melancholy baby. <laughs> she has a head like a melon and a face like a collie. A face like a collie. <laughs> Can you stop this racket? Fleischer, if you insist upon telling these corny jokes, don't tell them in front of this kook who laughs at everything you say. I'm sorry, Captain. I'm sorry, Captain. <laughs> hey! I can't help it. I'm sorry, Captain. It's the way he says it. <laughs> now listen, you two. We're conducting serious business downstairs. It sounds like a hyena cage up here. I'm sorry, Captain. Don't you say one word to him, do you understand? Not one word. <laughs> Look at him just standing there, he's not saying a word. Did you ever see anything so funny? <laughs> Gunther, will you pull yourself together? I can't help it. He's the funniest guy in the world. <laughs> the head like a melon and a face like a collie. Gunther, for Pete's sake. I'm telling you, that Charlie Fleischer's the funniest guy in the world. Gunther, Charlie Fleischer is a locker room comic. There's one in every police station, firehouse, and army barracks. Any place you find three showers and a dozen lockers, you'll find a Charlie Fleischer. I think they come with a plumbing. It's a shame for that talent wasted, sitting in a patrol car all his life. I'd like to get him a break. I'd like to get him on a Jack Parr show. Charlie Fleischer on the Jack Parr show? That's all Pa needs. More trouble. That's all Charlie needs. A little break. If I could only get to speak to Jack Pa. His own network can't get to talk to him. <laughs> Charlie Fleischer is now at the peak of his comedy career. He's unknown. A lot of guys were unknown until Jack Pa put him on. Look at them now. Stars. But they had talent. They were funny. Francis. Do you mean to sit there and tell me that Jonathan Winters is funnier than Charlie Fleischer? Of course he is. Charlie Fleischer's funnier than Buddy Hackett. He is not, and you know it. Phyllis Diller? No. But Charlie's funnier than Hugh Downs. Gunther, Hugh Downs is an announcer. He does commercials. He's not supposed to be funny. Sometimes Hugh Downs is funny. OK, every now and then he tells a joke. Well, the every now and then that you Downs is funny, Charlie is funnier than he is. Okay, if you insist, when Hugh Downs is funny, Charlie Fleischer is funnier than he is. That's what I wanted you to say. I wanted you to admit that Charlie Fleischer is a very funny guy, and if he get a shot on a Jack Parr show, he'd be a sensation. <laughs> please. I'm sorry, officer. I know I was going fast, but I'm a little late for a rehearsal. You Downs. Mr. Downs, this is a 35 mile per hour zone, and you would do it about... Th <laughs> you Downs. You're you Downs. Yes. Oh, oh. Francis. 
Francis. Francis, come here. Look, it's you, Downs. We were just talking about you. Oh, really? You're very funny every now and then. <laughs> Francis, look, it's you, Downs. Uh, this is my partner, uh, Francis Muldoon. How do you do? Hi, Mr. Downs. Well, what do you know? You, Downs. Officers, I am a little late, and I've got to get downtown to this rehearsal. You see, I'm sitting in for Jack this week. You are? Did Jack walk out again? No, no, no. He's on vacation. You sure he's not sore at anybody? No, everything's fine. Good. Whenever I don't see him on television, I always look at the papers to see what happened. Well, so far, everything's all right. Look, I, I am a little late, and I've, I've got to get down to the rehearsal, because I'm in charge of the show. You're in charge of the Jack Parr show? Yes. You mean you could put people on a show? You mean... You could discover people like Jack Parr does? Well, if someone comes along who has some talent. Ooh, ooh. Have I got a comedian for you? I wish you'd meet him. Gunther, Mr. Downs is in a hurry. Yes. His name is Charlie Fleischer. Charlie Fleischer? Yeah, maybe you met him. He used to be on a vice squad. <laughs> I mean, he knows a lot of show people. Mr. Downs, if you could just catch his act. I'm sorry, look, I I'm busy every minute. I've got two shows, I've got commercials. Gunther. Stop bothering Mr. Downs. Gee, I want him to see Charlie Fleischer. Ooh, ooh, I gotta talk to somebody on our radio. Please. I'm sorry, Mr. Downs. He's the arresting officer. Gotcha, Tootie. Okay. 53rd Precinct to dispatch. Call car 122. Go to checkpoint 809 on Bronx Parkway. Give aid and assistance to car 54. Keep moving. There's nothing going on. Keep moving. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Come on, keep moving. So he says, he only pay 20 cents for a cup of coffee. And I says, coffee's only a dime. He says, aren't you going to join me? <laughs> Come on, keep it moving. So I said to him, I am not accustomed to giving money to men on the streets. He says, what do you want me to do? Open an office? <laughs> well, what do you think, Mr. Dowd? Oh, fine, fine. Oh, wait, you seem to do his imitation of Cap Block out of pistol raids. Do it, Jolly. Oh, wait, wait. Maybe it would be a novel idea, a New York policeman telling jokes. Jolly, Jolly, come here. Did you hear that? You're going out of Jack Parr show. I'll murder him, Mr. Downs. Just put a camera on me and stand back. <laughs> Have his manager get in touch with the producer. I'll write out a note for him. His manager? Well, he has no manager. Oh, yes, I have. This is my manager. <laughs> I'm going to be your manager? <laughs> there isn't another guy in the world that could have got me on a par show. We're going up the ladder together, Gunther. Together, Mr. Downs. We're going up the ladder together. I'd like to go up with you, but I'm late for rehearsal. <laughs> Mr. Downs, we and the New York Police Department will never forget you for this. Thanks. Here's your note. And here's your ticket. <laughs> well, I see you certainly didn't forget me. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Downs. I'll wait him. We'll see you on the show. Definite. So I says to the waiter, what's this fly doing in my soup? And he says, the backstroke. The backstroke. <laughs> Charlie, you're the greatest. Wait till they get a load of you at a par show. I'll murder him. I'll get the laughs, you do the managing. Now, we've got to play it smart. The minute you're off the par show, you're a hit. We don't do a thing for 30 days. We wait till our resignation from the department clears, and then wham, I book you into Las Vegas. Las Vegas? Well, how about Miami Beach? Baby, Las Vegas. I want the moving picture crowd to see it. I want to set a picture deal for while you're still hot. Mr. Big Manager, before you leave for Hollywood, take out the garbage. Oh, Lucy. <laughs> garbage! Did you see my new clothes? I just got some new summer garb and some new winter garb. Now I got the best garbage in town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it, Lucille. Stop it. I'd like to. <laughs> oh, that's someone at the door. I wish it was me. Charlie, we got to get a new name for you. I think I got it. Charlie Chuckles. Oh, Francis, I'm glad you're here. What is it? It's Gunther. You've just got to talk to him. He's flipped. He's missed the show business. After Wednesday, it'll be all over. Oh, that'll be too late. You know what those two knuckleheads did? What? They wrote out their resignation from the police force. They're going up the ladder together. Oh, no. 
What's wrong with Charlie Fleischer? Mm, it isn't glamorous enough. We need some... Oh, hey, there's Francis. Maybe he'll help us out. Francis, you're just in time. Do you have a good name for Charlie? No, but I have a good one for you. Jerk. <laughs> Talk to him. Talk some sense into him, Francis. And Gunther, you listen to him. Gunther, you've always considered me a pretty smart guy. Oh, the smartest. That's why I need your answer right away. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yeah. Would you handle my New York office for me while I'm out in Hollywood with Charlie? New York office. Gunther, will you come down to earth? Will you face facts? You got one client who hasn't even worked yet, and already you got two offices. Are you kidding? The minute Charlie hits, every performer in town will want me to handle him. Me, the guy who put a cop on a top television show. Gunther, okay. Listen to me very closely. Say you get some more clients in New York. Say I agree to handle them for you. What do you need an office in Hollywood for with just Charlie? Just Charlie? Those big movie stars out there, they're just looking for a new fresh manager. Frank Sinatra changes manager every two weeks. I could get Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Doris Day, and William Holden, just like that. Oh, you could? Yes. And while you're handling them, I'm stuck in New York with a bunch of unknowns. <laughs> well, Frank, a bunch of unknowns in New York where there's hardly any television left, no nightclubs. That's certainly a very big favor you're doing for me, Gunther Tootie. Okay. You can have Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. <laughs> Thank you very much. Look who he's asked me to handle. Well, you can have Doris Day, too. But you gotta let me keep William Holden. I got big plans for him. You're wrong, William Holden. <laughs> Listen, Muldoon. You telling me about show business? Ain't I the guy who stopped you down for speed? Yeah, but I gave him the ticket. You gave him the ticket. Big deal. So that makes you smart enough to handle William Holden. If I'm smart enough to handle Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin, I'm certainly smart enough to handle... Talk to him, Lucille. He's sticking me in a New York office with a bunch of nobodies, and on top of that, he wants me to handle Frank Sinatra and Dean Sinatra and Dean. <laughs> He's got me doing it. Don't the way you stop with these crazy dreams of yours. Look what you're doing to Francis. I'm sorry, Francis. I just got carried away. It's all right. It wasn't your fault. I walked right into it. Francis. Yes, Gunther. You could have William Holden, too. <laughs> From New York City, the Jack Parr Show with tonight's guests, Buddy Hackett, Jaja Gabor, and Charlie Fleischer. And here he is, sitting in while Jack is on vacation, Hugh Down. Thank you. A funny thing happened to me on the way to the studio yesterday, and you're going to see him in about a minute. <laughs> and I was driving on the Bronx Parkway to the studio yesterday. This is it. How do you feel? Like the bottom of a stove. Great! <laughs> Pretty soon, up comes this other patrol car, and a policeman got out, a third policeman. Are you sure you remember your opening line? Hi, Soaks! <laughs> so, here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Direct from the 53rd precinct, that comical cop, Charlie Fleischer. Excuse me, folks. He's really a very funny guy. He's a little nervous. Uh, I'll loosen him up. Charlie, Charlie, don't you remember your opening? Hiya, Soaks. <laughs> wait, wait. He's got another one. His wife got him on a police force. She's got lots of pull. She needs it. She's got plenty to drag. <laughs> How does one go about the panhandler? A panhandler walked up to me. Oh, yeah, yeah. A panhandler walked up to me asking if I haven't had a bite in the week. So I bit him. <laughs> Tell me, do the imitation of Captain Block out of pistol range. Wait till you get a load of this one, folks. Imitation of Captain Block? Wait, wait. You'll ruin it. <laughs> imitation of Captain Block out of pistol range. Pow! 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 <laughs> Here he is, the star of the Jack Parr 
show. Oh, come on. Was he funny? Funny? Gutner, you were terrific last night. Terrific. Oh, anybody could have done it. Anybody could have hey, done it. The calls are still coming in. You broke it up on that Jack Parr show. You were great. Oh, thanks, baby. Thanks, thanks baby. <laughs> <laughs> you were simply sensational. <laughs> You say they stole your life savings? <laughs> when, when you did that imitation of me on the pistol range, I got calls all night. <laughs> <laughs> you were great, Gunther. I guess we won't have to get one of those big name comedians for the policeman's ball this year. If uh, Gunther is playing in the East at the time, we'll be glad to. Yeah. Oh, anything for the boys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Gunther, you were great. Thanks, Ed. Come on. Hey, wait. Hey, didn't I see you on television last night on the Jack Parr show? Yeah. Hey, what did you say? I couldn't turn the volume on. I was in a strange house. Uh, hey, Tony, how does it feel facing those TV cameras? It was easy, just like facing a loaded 45. <laughs> hey, what do you think happened to me? I went to the station. Huh? I... Hey, Bob Hope, you're still a cop. Come on, let's change into our uniforms. He's right. I gotta change it in my uniform. Let's see. What color should I wear today? I think blue. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever hear such timing in your life? Yeah. It's not what he says, it's how he says it. <laughs> what color shall I wear? <laughs> Car 54, check in. Car 54, message received. So until tomorrow at the same time, Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> Do you hear that, Francis? Boo, 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 boo. I heard it. Must be tough for you to keep it in. Keep what in? The laugh. That was funny. Boo, 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 boo. Gunther, boo, 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 boo isn't very funny. I know boo, 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 boo isn't funny, but it's the way I say it. It's my perfect timing. Look, Gunther. Never mind. I understand. It's perfectly natural for you to be jealous. Jealous? Yeah, it must be hard to take. Suddenly realizing the guy you always thought of as a slob turns out to be a talented comedian. Gunther, you're not a comedian. Sure, they laughed last night, but it was at the situation. You popping out from behind the curtain telling Charlie's jokes. Charlie standing there with his mouth hanging open. It was a fluke. Let's face it, you've sat next to me for nine years and you haven't said anything funny. That's the trouble. You're too close to me. You'd be the last person to know that I was pretty witty. I certainly would. All right. Until my 30 days are up, until my resignation from the force is final, you and I are two policemen who happen to be sharing the same squad car. All right? That's fine with me. Good. Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> That ain't funny. <laughs> First, you open in Las Vegas. I'll murder him. Ten thousand dollars a week. That's what I'm asking for you. And we don't step on that bus to Las Vegas for a penny less. Right. Oh, so now you're going to Las Vegas. What happened to that opening at the Copacabana here in New York, where you have friends who can catch you when they throw you out? <laughs> just like friends. It just kills you to think I want to make good. Gunther, will you grow up? Will you come out of that land of make-believe? You will think it's make-believe when you lie around that big swimming pool in Las Vegas. The hot desert sun is good for your sinus, Lucille. Eating regularly is good for my sinus. Before we leave New York, I'll get you a few spots on some big TV shows, just sort of teasers, and then you record your first record album. My first record album. An evening with Gunther Tootie. An evening with Gunther Tootie. Do you expect anybody to pay money to listen to you opening beer cans and snoring on the Davenport? All right. I'm sorry, but that's the only evening with Gunther Tony that I've ever spent. Do you mind? Do you mind? Don't worry, Lucille. Gunther's in my hands. Just watch me go. I saw you last night. You were magnificent. I know I got frightened and froze right up, but just watch me as a manager. I'm a tiger. I'll break down the doors of those big producers. I don't care how important they are. I don't care how big they are. They're going to listen to me. Keep talking. I'll answer the phone. I'm going to be calling the terms. When it comes to my clients, I'm afraid of nobody. Hello? Yeah, this is Gunther Tootie. Oh. You got to talk to my manager about that. You're darn right. And that's the way it's going to be from now on. Who is it? You Downs. Hi. <laughs> Charlie. Charlie, talk to him. 
He wants me back at a power show tomorrow night. Charlie, I'll be glad to, Mr. Downs. Thank you. Charlie, I gotta have jokes. I need someone to take care of me. Francis, gee, I hope he still talks to me. Well, are you going or do you plan to become part of my dining room set? <laughs> What is it, Gunther? Don't laugh. You Downs wants me back on a par show. Gunther, I told you if you... <laughs> Hugh Downs wants you back on the show? I was coming here and asking you to help me out, but on the way over, I started thinking. You're right, Francis. It was a fluke. I'm no comedian. I want to call him up. I want to tell him I can't go on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hugh Downs wants you back on the show? Hugh Downs has had a lot of experience. If he called you back on the show, Gunther, maybe I was wrong. Maybe you are a comedian. Some comedian. I got no jokes. I'll collapse right on that stage. I know it. No, you won't. Because I'm your manager now. But Fred says, we got to get you some jokes. But none of those corny jokes in the joke books. We got to get you the jokes of the people. Where? Where? Look at all the funny things we hear every day patrolling our sector from all those different types of people. Father Flanagan, he always has a nifty. Rabbi Eisenberg, he's no slouch. Yeah, they're pretty funny. Maybe they ought to go on a par show. There's a team. <laughs> but you don't understand. They're all funny in private, but it takes a natural comedy wit like you to be funny in public. I am? Gunther, you're terrific. What was that thing you said in the car today? Boo, 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 boo. Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> boo, 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 boo. <laughs> Hey, it is funny. Boo, 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 boo. Boo, boo, boo. Boo, 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 boo. Boo, 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 boo. Here's a joke my parish seems to enjoy. It's about the old maid at the zoo. She's standing in front of the kangaroo cage, and suddenly the kangaroo leaps over the fence and starts bounding through the park. An attendant rushes over and says, what happened? She says, I don't know. I just tickled him with my umbrella and he jumped over the fence and ran away. So the attendant says, well, you better tickle me too, lady, because I've got to catch him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, put that down, Francis. That was a belly buster. Oh, excuse me, Father. What a joke, huh? Yes, Rabbi Eisenberg. I know you always have some goodies. Uh, here's one I always tell my congregation. It's about this old maid who went to the zoo. She's in front of the kangaroo cage and... Excuse me, Rabbi Eisenberg. Yes? Yeah? Father Flanagan tells that same joke to his congregation. I know. And I'm just waiting for someone in my congregation to get up and tell me he heard it. <laughs> and now, folks, a return guest. You remember two nights ago when we had patrolman Charlie Fleischer on the program? which turned out to be the debut of Officer Gunther Tootie. Now, are you sure you're not nervous? Nervous? Are you kidding? That's my meat. There'll be plenty of my hands. <laughs> Here he is, one of the funniest natural talents I've seen in a long time. The pride of the 53rd Precinct, one of New York's finest and funniest, Gunther Tootie. You hear that? They love me. Good luck. Go ahead, officer. Gunther, go ahead. Gunther, remember your opening joke? Excuse him, ladies and gentlemen, he's a little nervous, but he's got a great opening joke. It's about an old maid who went to the zoo. Yeah, the zoo. She was standing in front of the kangaroo cage. Well, suddenly, when... the kangaroo jumped over the fence. Gunther, I'm working alone. <laughs> <laughs> when suddenly the kangaroo jumped over the fence and ran, ran away. The attendant rushed up and asked the little old maid, what happened? And she said, I don't know. I just tickled him with my umbrella and he jumped over the fence and ran away. So the attendant said, you better tickle me because I got to chase him. <laughs> There's 
There's a holdup in the Bronx. Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child. Cruise ships do it idle wild. Car 50.